All right. Well, I want to thank everybody first for coming to Cake Fest this year. And uh, my talk today is going to kind of give everybody a little rundown of the history of the project, uh, where we're currently at with the project, and then what we're, our plans are for the future of the project. Um, a, little thing, a little bit about myself. I've been a core contributor to Cake PHP like, from the beginning. Uh, I am one of the founders. We had three original founders of the project. I'll kind of go into that a little bit later. And I've been known with, under different names too. Um, well, PHP not as my username, but I've been called just a camera guy. I don't have a photo of the girl who gave me that name, but it was a pretty interesting conversation we were having at our last, last Cake Fest. And my little tag says founder on it, and she didn't realize that I was a founder until we were having dinner, or no, it was lunch, I believe. And I set my place down, and she was like, Oh my God, you're the founder. And she like was totally freaked out. She goes, I thought you were just the camera guy. And you know, cameras are my hobby and everything. And I do have a, a lot of them. And so people will call me the camera guy. Um, I've also been called a benevolent dictator. And there's a mistake with this and everything. Cause everybody knows you've, you've met me here and everything. And you can, you know, I'm not a benevolent dictator. I'm more of a dictator, <laughs> okay? And there's a lot of things that, uh, you know, it goes on in the project that we have a really good core development team and we've really improved with, I wanna say our communication over the course of the years. I'm not even a dictator anymore. I just, I'm more of an advisor. I'll sit around and see what everybody else is doing. You reach a certain age and a certain time of working on a project where the project itself can continue to do a lot of things without you. And that's really where I'm at right now. Is I, I watch what's going on. We have Mark Stories leading the project. Uh, Jose is a really good contributor on the project. And who else we have? Uh, Saran. I'll, I'll call most of the people by their use. Oh, and Graham, of course, yes. Nothing against you, Graham. <laughs> um, but seriously, all joking aside, you know, and I am a jokester, but I'm going to try to be serious for the most part, you know, with this talk today. Uh, Cake PHP, it all started in 2005, and the actually it started a little bit before 2005. Uh, Michael had created his initial implementation of what he called Cake, was a just a really generic routing system. There was some functionalities with models, the the controllers. Uh, the, the routing system in KPHP at the time was nowhere near as powerful as it is now. Actually, the framework itself wasn't as powerful as it is now. And that's just six years of progress that has gone into it. And I was actually working on another project. I'd been involved with open source for a number of years. I had left that. I had some things that kind of pulled me away from it. And when I got back into open source, I started working on something I called ZenSphere. And ZenSphere was... A lot of what you see has gone into the models of Cake PHP and some of the other functionality. That's where Michael and I merged these projects together. So in 2005, April of 2005, the project was officially released under the name Cake. And like I said, Michael had released it open source. This was the original core development team. I can't even tell you how to say his last name, but we have Michael. Um, of course, I was on there, and then uh, Camille was Brago. And Michael left the project probably, I want to say it's probably about a month and a half, maybe two months after we had released it out to the public. And Brago was, I want to say he, he may have been with the project for four months or five months. And then he decided he was going to go back to school. So when he went back to school, I was kind of stuck in this position. I had no project manager. Um, I had no intention of being a project manager, no intention of being a lead developer or anything. I mean, I just wanted to sit back, people tell me what they wanted to see, and then I would just knock out the code. And things ended up changing when the team split. Well, not really split, when everybody kind of went their own ways. I stayed on with the project, and then in uh, May of 2005, is when I 
registered the KPHP domain name. Now this is before the team had actually split. This is when Cake PHP as it is was officially, you know, a, a project. We had our own domain name. Prior to that, everything was done under another uh, company name that I had. And this is when we started getting a lot of activity. It was then it was an official project. People saw it as something that just wasn't a bunch of script kiddies trying to put something together and get it out to the public. Our development team continued to grow in this time. Um, Garrett Woodworth, who, uh, Jiwoo, a lot of you know him, or Gu, some, some call him Gu, but it's actually Jiwoo. Uh, he was in IRC. He would help a lot of the, the people out in IRC, and he and I just started talking in IRC, and I said to him one day, I was like, do you mind if I give you a call? Because I need a project. I want to talk to you about something. And when I called him, we just kind of hit it off. I asked him if he wanted to be the project manager because I didn't have a project manager. I didn't want to have to deal with all the politics of it. I just wanted to write code. And he's like, you know, sure. So he came on as the project manager. And sometime around there, Nate had started doing some work on the project too. He had committed a patch and I asked him if he would like to be a core contributor. And, you know, he did. And then, you know, as we continued doing this, um, the project really started it really started getting a, a good foothold on where we were going. We'd laid out roadmaps. Um, things were going really well with it. And we actually started, our, our user base started growing. And that's, that's one of the things, look, when, when you start an open source project, you really want that thing to take off and become very popular. And when it happened with this one, it was something I didn't expect. I mean, I expected it, but not the way that this project took off. That's because we had a lot of people who were dedicated. The, the team was great, and we just we just wanted to give our give away code. I mean, that's what it came down to. We wanted to give this code away. Whoops. So 2008. I'm jumping ahead a few years because everything that's happened between 2005 and 2008 was pretty much what I just said. We just was pounding out code. 2008. We had our very first Cake Fest. And we decided to do that in Orlando, Florida. Now, that was another surprise to me because I've never been to a conference for what I thought was like a small project. And we had maybe 40 people show up. And it was just a two-day event. We didn't have the workshops like we do now. But I was surprised to see people coming from other countries. We had a lot of people from Germany there. We had, uh, I'm trying to think, Germany. Well, Mariano was there, he was from Argentina, and I think I told everybody I couldn't understand his talk, but he, he's, he's done really well since then. And I'm trying to, but it was, it was just amazing to see all of these people come together for an open source project. And we continued doing this, we continued building out the project, building the community. Um, our Google group had been going for a long amount of time, and that's like, Anybody who is, knows much about this project, you know I don't want forums. I've said for years I don't want forums. If you want communication, use the Google group. I mean, that's what we do. It's, uh, I have no intention of ever putting up a, a, an actual forum online. See, 2009 was a big change for the project. We had uh, 1.3 was getting to the point where we were going to be releasing it. There was a lot of changes. Mark had actually come on to the project. May of 2008. 2008, was it May of 2008? Okay. And I was trying to find some of the history, and I kept going back and going back. It was like, yeah, Mark's actually been involved with the project long. And, you know, this is when we had, uh, I actually kind of stepped down as lead developer on the project this time, the, or the first part of the year, and the new project lead took over, and well, Mark actually started doing a lot more development. You could go back and see the timeline, and that's where our project, we still had focus, and we were still going along with our roadmap, where we wanted to be with the project, what we wanted to put out to the community, and then we started having, uh, we actually had two different branches of the code going are two different code bases. I don't want to say branches, because the one that was Cake 3, which 
ended up becoming lithium was something that was being developed as, uh, like a replacement for cake PHP, but it's not what we were wanting to do as a team. And it, Mark continued to work out on, uh, on the 1.3 base. We got the release out. And then we had a big split in the team. You know, that's the, the fork happened after the last cake fest. Um, and a lot of people in the community felt that this project was going to collapse. That's where there was a, I don't, I don't want to say it, it wasn't a, it wasn't a large majority of the community. It was, I mean, there was like, you could see it on the, the Google group, all of the core team split, you know, what's going to happen, what's going to happen with Cake PHP. And we basically come back and said, the project's still here. And the project was. Um, we had a little fun with it. We played some games and, you know, we're, we're software developers, but we have a sense of humor too. So we, this was happening right around Halloween, I think. So we ended up putting up a website that it was, what's, uh, it was an undead version. It looked like a, basically a zombies. I don't have a picture of this. I, if the guys want to have a look, they can go to zombie.kphp. Yes, okay, zombie.kphp.org. You can see what the site looked like. And basically what we did with this, this kind of a, is a underhanded joke maybe that or we, we wanted people to see we've got a sense of humor. We're gonna continue with this project. It doesn't matter who's on this project. The community itself is large enough that it's going to continue. It's going to grow, whether I'm here, whether Mark's here, whether Grant's here, anybody on the current core team. This project is going to survive within it without any of us. That's how large, and it's the community that's going to do that. It's not the core development team. Um, so you know, during this whole process and everything, we started coming together more as a uh, we're more of a tight knit group of developers. We're, we're very selective on who's going to be part of that core development team. And, and the people that are chosen for that are the ones who have contributed to the project. When we moved everything to GitHub, that was the, one of the best moves we made because it really opened up people being able to access our code. Before the part about you know me, me being a dictator and everything, I was really restrictive with the code. We, I wanted it certain ways for the patches to be submitted to us. I wanted, um, I wasn't so much into having tests, requiring tests with a patch, but it would have been good. It would have given us a better, um, better understanding of what the user, the, the problem that they had had with it. And when we got to, um, when, we, when we switched everything over to GitHub, that's when we started getting a lot more contributors. And it wasn't where we weren't required to all oh, create a patch, create a ticket, attach your ticket to the patch, or you attach your patch to the ticket. We we're in a position where GitHub gave us the tools that would allow us to, somebody could commit to their branch, send us a pull request, we could look at that and then pull it right into the framework immediately if it was something. If it wasn't something that was a, a good fix, we could look at it, it would give us an idea on you know, we could still see the problem that they were having, but it allowed us to have a better understanding and, and actually implement it a different way, implement that patch a different way. And we jumped from, when we first moved everything to, to GitHub, we became one of the fastest fork projects that was on there. Uh, we had, I don't know how many forks we have of it now, we're still and some of them were still in, in the top running. I think there's other projects that have gone on there now that had, do have larger user bases. And they continued to, you know, outpace us in the, in the uh, pull, not pull requests, but the, the forks. But we still, I think, still maintain a good stat on that. And, you know, all of this happened in 2009. We moved everything to GitHub. Uh, we had, we were using Git. Originally, when I started the project, it was an SVN. And we moved in 2009, we moved to Git. We were doing it under our own domain. We were hosting everything under our own domain. And then after our team kind of split like it did, we decided let's push everything to GitHub. 
because there's less people on the project. We don't have the resources we need to maintain our own servers. Uh, we st still kept our own servers in place for a while just for the website and for a cake forge, which I decommissioned cake forge earlier this year, asked everybody to just start using GitHub because there's, there's really no, no need for us to have to manage not only our own domains, but then the, the Cake Forge project itself. And that was a popular site. You know, some people were upset with it, but it was a decision we'd made as a team to just start focusing. We wanted to focus more on the code and start providing other tools for the user base. Uh, we launched, you know, bakery had been around for years, but we had redesigned the bakery. We uh, created the ask site, the ask.cakephp.org. Our book was always being improved. Our book, that was one of the, probably the, probably the, the biggest issue that people had with this project was the documentation. How many people think documentation sucks for KPHP? Or sucked, let's say that. Shut up, Mark, you're not supposed to say that. <laughs> um, and, and a lot of that, I mean, it's, it, I, I guess my idea on documenta uh, documentation has changed now and this is working at the development corporation, where we really push there to, to make sure everything's documented very well. When I first started with KPHP, documentation was the last thing on my mind. Okay, I wanted to implement the code. I wanted to see this work, and documentation could always come back and document what you did. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> and, you know, that's, that's probably... One of the things I'd say that's probably one of the, the biggest problems that I had with the framework or with, with the project itself was being able to document everything that I was doing or what I've, everyone else was doing on the project when we first pushed it out. And if I could go back and do it again, our documentation, then we would have written the code. So, you know, during this whole time though, we, we continued moving forward, uh, 2010, was that was our big transition time. Our team had split 2009, 2010, we were ramping up. We started having all the ideas that we were wanting to do in 2.0. Uh, there was a, a lot of the changes they've been going into. I don't know who's aware of, there's a group, it's a PHP standards group. It's not really an official standards group, but it was a group of, uh, other framework developers who had come together and they said, you know, we need to try to standardize plug or not plugins, but uh, we need to try to standardize how code is written, how files are named, how directories are created. And a lot of this had to do with the, the automatic loading of a, a class loader that had been written by somebody else and we're trying to get this into the, the PHP core. I was real reluctant about adopting that, and it's just I, I've always liked lowercase file names and you know things like this, and and I guess I had to kind of let go of that and let everybody else on the team say, okay, yes, this is what we're going to do. We're going to move forward with that. So we did, and it's actually probably one of the better decisions, again, that's happened. It's like, as it's, it's a founder of a project, you don't always make the best decisions. And that's something I've realized over the last six, almost seven years. And that's why you have a group of other developers who work with you that kind of come up and give you a kick when you need it. They just don't kick you when you're down all the time. Um, but yeah, with, with, with this, and moving forward with the code, starting to focus on a PHP 5, only version, and I'll explain the reason why this is something that we wanted to do. Um, that that move from going from 1.3 to 2.0 in a, a PHP 5 only version, there was a lot of things that we needed to discuss with that. How are we going to keep our users? You know, our, what are we? The biggest thing with us was we did want to break backwards compatibility. Uh, Cake PHP was originally PHP 4 and PHP 5. You could write your code using PHP 5 only syntax and that was fine. The, your app would still run. There's a, this big stigma that a lot of people had that Cake PHP is a PHP 4 framework. It's not. It was actually written 
with the anticipation of being a PHP 5 only in the future. But at the time, the largest users of PHP were still stuck on PHP 4 web servers. And a lot of them were uh, shared host. Now, as an owner, uh, I used to own an ISP, so I know a migration to do this upgrade is probably one of the things that you, tr you want to put off as long as possible. And I felt that that was going to be the case with PHP 4, and it turned out that you know there's still some PHP 4 servers out there. There's a lot of applications that have been written on PHP or Cake PHP that are running on PHP 4 servers. We would like to get everybody to upgrade, but that's not going to happen. But we did have a large user base, and to to jump right into you know we we are going to be going to 5.3 or five excuse me 5.4 and above. Um, but it's not going to happen in this 2.0 code. There will be a Cake PHP 3.0 that is going to be in sometime in the future. We've actually we've discussed when we want to start that, and everybody knows with this we don't put out any information on when something's going to be done. We never tell you anybody when there's going to be a release. Um, but that's. I mean, that's where we're at with the project right now. We're on a, a PHP 5.24, are, are we at 2.4, 5.24 and above? 5.26 and above. And we're actually going to be um, here soon pushing out a, an RC release. So this, this is where we're at in, in 2011 is we've, we've gotten to a point where We've gone through some um, some beta releases of Cake PHP. We've gone through well. We did our alpha releases, our betas, and, and we're we're really close to our RC releases. And actually, today I'm going to announce that you know 2.0. We are pushing it into our RC four, our RC one. We're going to go through a few RC releases those and those release candidates we're going to try to push them out fast they just they, they stayed up the team stayed up last night fixing two other bugs that were in the system or in the the code that was mark and jose i have no clue what time they went to bed because i tried myself to go to bed early in it i actually stayed down here a little bit but it was three three a.m okay they stayed up till three a.m so we could get this rc release out today and um a little bit about the release and everything um, anybody know what this is? <laughs> That's an armadillo. Okay. <laughs> Think about an armadillo. It's it's a uh, it's it's a hard shell. It's it's a very protective uh, thing. And I, I kind of when I when I looked at this, I'm thinking to myself, you know, it's like me. I got this hard shell. I'm very protective and everything, but. I didn't like this, right? I didn't like the look of that. So then I found this. That's more me. That's, a, that's an armadillo, right? So what we're going to be doing with our RC release is I've got a new platform that's going to be pushed out. It's armadillo. And you can find it here. What's that? You didn't see that. You didn't see that? Oh, I, I, sorry guys. Is it there? The code? I do like that logo though. So how fast is it? How fast is the platform? Rick and I worked on it for a while. You have to go to github.com really slash php nut slash armadillo. No, oh. php nut dot github dot com slash armadillo. It should work. That, that no. Hold on a second. Let me see. I'll just take this down for me. It could be... Um, Yeah, yeah, it's capital. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, that should work for you. So,
All right, guys, I'm kidding. No, all joking aside for real. That was, you know, that's my joke for the day, I guess. There we go. Now, who's going to dance to it? When, I, when, I, when somebody told me about this yesterday, you know, just uh, actually that music that we had last night made me think about this. So, but, okay, where we're at right now, okay, 2008 till when? Okay, where are we going to be with the project? What are we going to be doing? And I put together a list of some of the stuff that we're going to be focusing on it, it, through the foundation, not, not necessarily with just with the, the project. There's other things that we're doing at the Cake PHP project or at the Cake Software Foundation for the project. And we're, got, we're going to really start trying to push community meetups in different areas. Um, if need be, we will try to get some of the core development teams. It doesn't matter where it's at. If we have the time available and the funds available, we'll try to send some of the core development team to these meetups and help people who are interested in building the meetups and, and actually getting a community in their area. That's what we're going to be doing. We're going to start doing more of the workshops. And those could be on site for companies. We could, we're actually going to, uh, this U.S. city tour. Last year, Graham, Jose, and myself flew from New York. We did a presenta presentation in New York, one in Chicago, one in L.A. This year, we're going to rent an RV, and we're going to leave New York and start hitting all different types, probably about six or seven cities throughout the U.S., and just do a you know presentation, spend a day, do some workshops with people, and really explain what's going on with the framework. There's a lot of people... How many people attended the workshops here? Okay. How many people got a lot of information out of those workshops? Okay. Those who didn't put your hands back up are liars because I know they did. There was a lot of stuff in there that uh, I didn't even know. No. <laughs> um, we're going we're gonna to try to have more of the official conferences. Next year, I'm, I'm going to take Cake Fest back to the U.S. And the reason we're doing this, and I've, I've been kind of torn if I want to just continue to do them in the U.S. only, but after coming here this week, you know, this is something Graham and I just discussed before we came. It's like, you know, from now on, we're probably just going to do our conferences in the U.S. The U.S., there's, we get a larger turnout. Um, the, uh, as I said before, every event, they've all come from everywhere. You guys invade us and us being the, the U.S. And, but at, at that changed after I came here and I, I sat down with people and I got to talk with everyone. I actually want to bring this event back to this area, even this same conference center because I think this was an excellent place for us to do this. And just everybody that I've been able to meet here and, and you know, the friends I've met, that's one of the things about these conferences. Okay, you come, yes, you come to learn, you come to listen to people, you know, People get up here and, and do their presentations. If they're like me, I'm not a person that can get in front of a group of people and speak very well. I'm more comfortable sitting around at a table and talking to people or doing it online on IRC because that's what I did for like my entire life with this project. Um, but with these conferences, we're going to try to push them more. We're going to do next year, we're going to do Cake Fest on the West Coast. We're going to actually start planning that on Monday. So anybody who was at this event and is interested in putting in any talks, be looking for that on cakefest.org. We're going to start accepting submissions for the talks probably within the next week and a half, two weeks. And we're going to try to really push to get a conference in the U.S., possibly at the beginning of the year. And then I want to come back and see you guys sometime next year, too. You know, if you guys will have me back or have the development team back. I don't, you may not want me back. Um, the online training, what we're going to be doing with the online training is we've actually put together a platform where we're going to do video training with groups of people. There's going to be a course outline, and that course outline is what we're going to be using for certification. You know, some people had asked me about certification. That's something we've had on the, the website for years at the Kick Software Foundation. We never really pushed the certification, and that's because the plan was is we were going to do it on the, the 1.x line of code. It didn't work out that way because there was like, I, I really don't think a certification on 
something that will run PHP 4 was going to do anybody any good because there is a lot of people have that stigma. So the certification is going to be on 2.0 and above. Now we will still offer the the uh, workshops are going to offer 1.3 until we're, we're not going to end of life our, our code. There's you know we, we will always push out bug fixes on an older branch of code or security exploits. So if you do have older code and you know you don't want to do the upgrade, trust we're we're going to keep the codes so you can continue to use it. We're not going to add any new features to it. But with that said, the certification 2.0 and above um, workshops will be 1.3 and 2.0, and they will probably continue like that until we've hit a another release of KPHP 2. the 2.0 branch. Right now, with this release is coming out, there's some things that we weren't able to get into it, and that's we will. I want to say shortly after we go stable with 2.0, we're going to be right behind that with another release, pushing out some betas and some RC releases for things that we did not have time to get into. It's not that we didn't have time because we're an open source project, we can take all the time we want, but we didn't feel that they were necessary to be in this release. Um, let's see what else is there. The meetups, the workshops, the train does does anybody have any questions about you know where we're at with the project or what we're doing, why we did made certain decisions on things or any what's Well, I, I ignore what? 5.3. 5.2? 5.3. 5.3? When, you, when you're a project like KPHP and you have a large community, you've got to have that migration process to get to them. Now, you can still, you, any of the code that we have right now, you can write your applications with 5.3. We, we actually put a fix into 1.3 to stop it from throwing the notices. Um, 2.0, the same way. Now, our migration process to go from from one point, how many people used KPHP before 1.2? Okay. How many people enjoyed going from 1.2 to 1 point, or from 1 point whatever to 1.2? None of you, right? Because there was br breaks. <laughs> Who? I enjoyed it. You did not. <laughs> did you? The, you wanted those features? Well, you enjoyed, well, I'm, no, you enjoyed it because there was additional features there. Yeah. But the migration process, there was, there was a lot of breaks in backwards compatibility. And that's something that you, you'll see through the other versions that we've done. From 1.2 to 1.3, there was not very many breaks in backwards compatibility. And those that were, were very well documented. There was a complete migration guide in place for that. And same thing with 1.3 uh, to 2.0. We have a migration. We actually have scripts that will some of the workshops where we had this request data, how we, we've removed this data. Well, not technically, they haven't removed it, but with, with that, you can run these upgrade scripts and it's gonna go through your code and it's gonna find those and it's gonna upgrade it. And to, to try to do this and implement namespaces into uh, a PyPoint or a, in 2.0, a lot more difficult to do that, to try and create the upgrade scripts to, to keep our users happy. We want to, as a project like this, you need to try to keep the community happy. Give them that upgrade process and things will go a lot smoother. So, uh, did that answer your question? And I, I don't regret the decisions that we've made on any of it, and the reason why is because of the community. If, I look at it like this, if you're gonna, if you've been using any private project for a long period of time and they do something that's going to break your application you have to rewrite it from scratch almost you, you're going to look elsewhere you know I think a lot of people would do that so that's the main reason the community anybody else have questions comments you want to throw something at me? Yes. 
I, I actually do that armadillo. I may do something with it. I'm not. I'm gonna leave it out there for a while. But you guys, I had to do that. And I want to thank the community, okay? Because without the community, we wouldn't be here. Um, there's there's only so much you, you do with a project for your own, and then when you turn something into an open source project like this, you don't continue working on open source code for yourself. You, you do it because there's other people are using it and you do it basically for the community and we have a, a huge one. And then of course the uh, KPHP development team, you know, without them, none of us would be here. And you know, they've, uh, they've really kept this project going. So thank you very much.